In 1999, in Santa Monica, California, Chef Josiah Citrin opened his dream French-focused fine dining restaurant, drawing from his hands-on culinary education in Paris and experience working alongside top chefs in Los Angeles. His culinary philosophy, in pursuit of excellence, led to him receiving two Michelin stars for Melisse in 2008 and again in 2009. But in 2019, Citroen wanted to create a different Melisse and split the space into two restaurants, a 14-seat Melisse within a new restaurant, Citroen. The new Melisse provided an intimate and precise experience that would again be awarded two Michelin stars. And today, I will eat everything from Melisse. We're taking Eat the Menu on the road. I am going to eat all the most delicious things in your city. See it live. We're going on the road. We're gonna do an Eat the Menu live show in six different cities. We're gonna be eating lots of local chains and mom and pop shops, comparing some of your favorites to each other. We'll have special guests, some songs, some games. Zach's gonna do some stuff. We're also gonna bring some of you up on stage to eat with me. If we're coming to your city, let us know in the comments what we should be eating there. And if you'd like us to come to your city, where do you live? Let us know. I can't wait. We'll, yeah. we'll see you there. Bring your appetites. I'm gonna throw food at you. Today, I'm eating everything from Elise, our two-star Michelin restaurant. But just to get into this restaurant, you can go through the restaurant or you can go through a sort of sneaky way. The whole experience is very theatrical. As you can see right behind me, chefs are preparing the food. This is how it works here. And it's a little bit of a show of the meal preparation. Everyone has served every course at the same time. So it is really a experience, not just a dinner. So I'm excited. Let's eat the menu, Elise. My name is Josiah Citrin. We're sitting here at Melise and Citrin Restaurant, or Citrin and Melise Restaurant in Santa Monica, California. Melise's approach to cuisine is, I like to call it, contemporary American with French influences, and we're kind of sliding now into the new description of coastal California with French influences. So the dinner experience is kind of like where the dining room and the kitchen are combined together. The chefs cook in front of the guests. They get to see the whole action in a very close-up environment, as well as they come to the table and deliver the food and explain it and we play all albums through the night. We play everything on vinyl, so it's supposed to be the art pieces, the artists kind of made it, or their bands made their songs, and how it goes through the progression of a, of a record, we go through the progression of a menu. At this moment, we're pretty happy with how it's going. We'll see in another five years. The 30 year anniversary, we probably have to do something new. Still have to pay off the investment. Actually, to start, we're gonna head into that kitchen back there and have the canapes, which is the first round of little bite-sized treats. My name's uh, Shazad Batena. I'm your the sous chef at restaurant Melis uh, in Santa Monica. This is like the first course, sort of the four bites of the first course of the meal. Exactly. So these are like really explosive in flavor. So we'll start off with this uh, Wagyu one over here. We marinate it for a minimum of 24 hours. So it helps to mature that flavor. And over here, um, what we have is a combination of pickled enoki mushrooms, some daikon and some chives. We're basically just going to roll it up we give it a little bit of lemon zest to brighten the dish up. So we have a white daikon pickle, and then we have a red radish pickle. So these two pickles will add some acidity, and we cut this with some hot mustard. What we do is we rest these on a potato crisp. Gives a little bit more texture to yeah. the crunch of the potato. We recommend the guests to enjoy it in one single bite. Mmm. Wow, it's kind of like the tiniest, most delicious, steak sandwich. Uh, it has like a steak frites vibe too with a little bit of potato chip, the fried potato. Wow, I thought it was gonna be much more savory, but it actually has this really, what's the word? I, I like musically sweet. <laughs> like listening to a sweet song. <laughs> so next, we'll go on to our shima aji tart. Over here we have a mixture, uh, which is the shima aji, some hikama. We have a oil that we make out of some red kosho. So we have a red kosho oil, some chives, fresh wasabi as well. And then this gets topped with some Kaluga caviar. And our Kaluga caviar is topped with some hanaho or uh, shiso flowers. And then on the outside, we're gonna dot it with some mayo that we infuse with a yuzu kosho as well. Do you think you could also be a surgeon? Uh, sometimes because of the tweezers, yeah. I do feel like that. Everything you're doing is so tiny and so <laughs> delicate and so perfect. 
Is it going on this? It's going on this. Oh, starling. <laughs> it's beautiful. I feel like it speaks to most of the guests really, really like this presentation. Yeah. The first one was like the little sweet song. This is like Tchaikovsky, you know, 1812 Overture. Big, explosive flavor. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was great. It's tough to only get one bite of each of those things. You it really is want because to live in it again. I think there is like a beauty or the good part about those canapes and kind of holding back mm -hmm. when you when you leave the guests almost wanting more. Yeah. I feel like that also yeah. adds to the, the beauty or the essence of it. So next canapé, uh, our second last one, it's our take on a Caesar salad. So this is like thinking of a Caesar salad and enjoying that Caesar salad in one bite. So what we have here is Celsius, so the root of the lettuce. Oh. A lot of people... Um, lettuce even, has roots? Even, even me, actually. I didn't know about that for a while. I guess of course it has roots, but... I guess I can't find you just pick them up off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> but the flavor is very refreshing like a lettuce. So it's pretty interesting. Um, cool. Then we have a aioli that we uh, make with a lot of anchovy and garlic. So it's like really strong. We have some segments of lemon. So it's just fresh lemon that have been segmented. And then the, the main lettuce element is this. It's basically a sword lettuce puree. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's if you, I ordered a Caesar salad, I'm not sure I would expect this. Exactly. <laughs> These anchovies, uh, it's two type of anchovies in here. One's a smoked anchovy, and one's the like traditional pickled anchovy. Uh -huh. And then we have some aged Parmesan cheese here. So we're gonna top. Oh yeah, really go for it. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the amount of cheese that I put on like a taco. <laughs> and you, I don't think you're supposed to put that much cheese, but it really makes it kind of incredible. I don't think there's ever enough cheese. Yeah, wow. Beautiful. And before we enjoy that, I'll play the other one as well. This is pretty quick. Cool. Wow, so, this is just already gorgeous. <laughs> Whatever you've done ahead of time is incredible. And again, so delicate. All right, so that is basically our take on squab and eel with a little bit of uh, chicken liver mousse, some black truffle, as well as a truffle aioli and some preserved Meyer lemon puree. Wow. And we basically top these onto that. It can be a little uh, fiddly to work with this sometimes. This does seem quite fiddly to work with. Wow, that is so pretty. So those are our last two canopies. I would definitely recommend starting with the Caesar, Caesar. first. Uh-huh. Mmm. That was really good. I don't think I've ever had a Caesar bite with that much like Caesar salad flavor. flavor right? Concentrated. Mm -hmm. Wow. It really makes you salivate a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of like, hit with a lot of flavors. And now this guy, which is just the most beautiful little thing. It almost feels too pretty to eat. I feel like it's art. Mmm. Yeah, the texture is really good. Almost like an Italian deli meat chew to it, but right. really tender and great. And the little butter toast was just delightful. Wow. Man, I can't believe we're not eating any more of those. <laughs> <laughs> those are so good. I mean, my on this show, I only only do take one bite of everything. All right. But that is really something you want to have again and again. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. That was good. Why don't we have a little cocktail break? This is the Midnight Margarita. It's a charcoal infused tequila. A little bit of a charcoal salt over here. I do love margaritas. Who doesn't? Right? Do I have a little mustache? I love all those videos about trying to have a serious conversation while also tasting the salt on your drink. I mean like, I'm so sorry they broke up with you. That is just so crazy. Yeah. It's a margarita, guys. It's delicious, it's wonderful, makes you feel good. And now, the amuse. It's very hard for me not to make a joke about being amused, but I'll be reserved for now. It's literally gonna come from right there. I think that's what's so fun about this whole experience is that you're watching it all get prepped and then it arrives. Wow. Gorgeous, beautiful. Today is a celebration of white asparagus. At the very bottom, you have some main lobster, a green asparagus. It's been topped with a lobster coral mousse, as well as a twill that's been made from some lobster coral. What I'm pouring here is a white asparagus velouté. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Appreciate Enjoy. it, Chef. Thank you. It feels 
wrong to even eat it. This is very, very confusing, but let me talk for a second. We have apple pie and ice cream. It's hot and cold, but it's sweet and sweet. But this is a cold sweetness amidst this hot soup. Never had a savory dish that is like, especially a soup that is hot and also has something that has texture that's cold. Mmm. Wow. I've just never had an experience like this at all with the, the flavor and the temperature. Bravo. It's a celebration. A celebration of asparagus. Continuing the celebration, we have white asparagus uh, gelato. You have some trout roux, freshly cooked white asparagus as well, a smoked quail egg, and that's being garnished with some mustard flowers as well. So cold. To go from hot soup to icy, that's fun. Oh, wow. I also am the most nervous I've ever been on Eat The Menu to like be a professional. I have an entire, everyone important is just over there. You're like, what's he gonna say? Is he gonna describe it? Is, are his descriptions even worthy? That's my concern. I feel like I need to have a Michelin approach to how I describe everything. It's great, it's sweet. It's got these little pops of the briny saltiness from the row. The egg is nice and fatty and rich, but the asparagus really is the star. It's just delicious. Do I eat this guy with the spoon? Spoon. <laughs> They're really cheering me on over there. It's like, spoon. I'm like, yes, thank you. You have a crab jelly, a few pieces of uh, white asparagus in that as well. It's been topped with a coconut white asparagus and miso custard. It's been topped with some Alaskan king crab right on top and some scallion curls as well. Whoa. It almost is like a jello in texture, but there's more. I don't know, there's more chew and stuff with it because the crab is in there. Really delicious crab flavor. But honestly, the texture is just indescribable, which is not good for a food review show, and I get that. Finishing everything off is a crudo year. The fish is marai. It's being served with a leche de tigre that's been made with some seville and caracar oranges. Some more raw shaven white asparagus there as well. Finished with kinome oil. I shouldn't try to eat this all in one bite, right? No, I should exp I should love it. You know, I should dance with it for a while. It's got the raw asparagus. Let's have a taste. Mmm. Mmm, oh, really fresh, really like herbal. And then you have a great acidity. The fish is delicious. Each of these just flavor-wise, totally unique, and yet the asparagus really was like a great presence throughout all of them. What a beautiful celebration of asparagus. Feels like, I can't even see the show. The show's behind me. I could have watched the entire show, but I feel like the show is happening. It is like eating art. If you've ever been to a museum and the painting looked delicious, you can't even touch paintings. Here, you can eat the art. So, take that, museums. Mm. Now it's time for the first three courses of the dinner service, and I'm joined by Chef Josiah. How's it going? It's going great. Excited yeah. to be here dining with you. So what are we about to have? Uh, right now we're going to have our first three courses. We're going to have the uni kromsky, which is uh, one quick bite. It's the one dish that's pretty much been on the menu since we started. Wow. So this one you gotta do one shot. One shot, you don't bite into it. Oh, right, because it'll do everywhere. Yes. Hot and cold. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Hot and cold, yeah. balance. Creaminess inside, mm -hmm. crunchy as the bread. Really rich with the uni and buttery. This is a little table. Yeah, it's a little tablecloth, right? Table on a table. Yeah. Like restaurant in a restaurant. Exactly, it's kind of cool. I like these plates. Everybody likes these. Yeah, they're fun. So this is our caviar course. It's a salsa fee custard, so it has roasted pieces of salsa fee at the bottom. A smoked seaweed broth, a bit of walnut oil, and au cetra caviar. As we top this off. The caviar. You don't want to mix it. You want to eat it in layers. Mm-hmm. Mm. Everything has been so unique that I have a hard time relating it to something else, which you said, that's kind of the point, right? And it, it is the I point. I think so, yeah. You know, you're making a, a new experience. I think that's what's like fun about going to a, a night out restaurant, especially one like this that has this sort of show element. But but I do love the 
uh, sort of brininess of it. And from the caviar, but then you have the vegetable aspect, which is the salsa fee. Mm -hmm. And the reason we chose the salsa fee is when it's caramelized and cooked down, it has an oyster and a, and a scallop flavor to it. It's good. This is good. Yeah, it's good. This, this, this. It's really good. This is our scallop from Stoning to Maine. It's on a bed of English peas, celery root, and black truffle, the pea mousseline. Sauce is made of uh, whey and bergamot. Wow, this is so vibrant. The scallop. Mm. Peas. Strong peas. It's a very subtle dish. Mm -hmm. A lot going on, mm -hmm. but all with peas, right? Yeah. The texture of the scallop is incredible. But the acidity you've added to the, the peas is really like bright. Yeah, you need the yeah, you need the acidity. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the lemon, you have the, the bergamot. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice little like subtle earthiness to it. Just a great texture. Scallops. Such a great texture. I don't know if anything has the texture of a scallop other than a scallop. Maybe the right kind of mushroom has that texture. Yeah, it's really good. What I've actually found is almost everything I've had has left a really delicious flavor after it's done, where you're like, I'm still kind of tasting everything I was tasting, and I'm sort of tasted all the way until the arrival of the next dish. That's the idea. The yeah. flavor the lingers flavor, really that, that well. That is nice, the nice lingering flavor, mm -hmm. the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. That's important to food, the aftertaste. Yeah. See all the Michelin guys up there? I know, I actually had never seen them in person. You know, this is all it was. Right. It's not this picture, it's not like now. Like here, two stars, Chateau de la Colle, Residence Carnival. That's all it says, two stars. <laughs> Doesn't say what. Percy de Ridevo et Langoustine, Lot Rotio, Large Fumé. But this is just the guide. But it's always fun to watch the chefs who got their stars when they, the rise of a chef, the fall, the time, mm -hmm. the restaurant. And yes, we'll go it's here it. and three star Gemma, and it says Gelée de caviar, la crème de chauffeur, galette de truffe, Blanc de bar, sauce de juju. That's it. Wow. Okay, so now. It's cool because it is like a guide, but it also just sort of becomes a record. It's a history. Yes. Yeah. I love looking at this and what, I mean, I'm a buff, I'm a gourmand. I mean, I, and it's just fun to do it. So I just like to study it, just to I see, really like, cool. put it in place. I mean, Here's what we gotta get. If you get this, you're the elite, and that's our goal. Yeah. To make this food the best it could ever be. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's have another little cocktail break, shall we? This is the Melisse cocktail. They have it in alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and this is the non-alcoholic variety. Mmm. Really. Like, kind of like that. Like, almost like a really, like fun lemonade. It has like a yuzu, a lemon, very tart, very fun. I love just non-alcoholic cocktails. I think mocktails are great. I love this era of people giving inventive, fun, fancy drinks that don't have any poison in them. I like poison drinks too, but you don't have to have poison every time. But doesn't this look cool no matter what? It doesn't matter if there's not alcohol in this. It's delicious and it's fun. It's good. It's nice. It's Melisse. And now it's time for the next three courses, and joining me is YB. Hi. How's it going, YB? Good, how are you? I'm great. Have you eaten at a lot of Michelin star restaurants? No, actually, I haven't at all. None? No, the last eat the menu, was that Michelin star? Lunasia was Michelin guide. Okay. Which means like of note, but not necessarily at a star. It also sometimes actually even relates to the price and the style of service. Yeah, I never have. Well, so I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly haven't eaten it very many until this show either. Yeah. I kind of made this show as an excuse to get my foot in the door. It's actually easier to book a shoot than get a reservation. Really? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It's also really expensive, right, to eat at a Michelin Yeah, I mean, typically it's because, you know, all the chefs are at a super high level in their career. Yeah. The ingredients are super exquisite. The decor is really nice. The service standards are very up oh, there. Whoa! The chicken! Did you see that? Wow. It's just the chicken for our next course. It's a hay-baked golden chicken from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's pasture eggs and it eats uh, organic corn. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm so excited. <laughs> hay? Baked? <laughs> what it's, does that even mean? It means it's baked in hay. Okay. <laughs> From start to finish, the chicken got to live on a farm. Farm to table. What about farm to, to farm, farm to table? Yeah. Well, that looks like a cartoon, but it's so shiny. <laughs> it looked perfect. It did look kind of like unbelievably perfect. Yeah. Here we have the hay baked chicken. Okay. I served with a green asparagus delta from the Sacramento area and a morel mushroom. And it's in a this little green sauce made from the asparagus poaching liquid. I'm gonna finish it with sauce albacera, white pork, and duck liver. Ooh. Wow. 
Wow. wow. Okay. It's gorgeous. It looks like a little forest. Yeah, it does. Like a know? tree here. Or like a clearing in the forest. <laughs> so this is the same chicken that we got to see. and It was sizzling in front of us. Doesn't even look like chicken. Well, it kind of looks like chicken. <laughs> There's like green sauce on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Whoa. How could a chicken be like that? <laughs> that is so chicken flavored. But not chicken like texture. Such a dense flavor of, of chicken. It's almost like a reduction of chicken. Yeah. But it is just chicken. When you think chicken breast, you usually think it's gonna be like dry, right. you know, but it's not dry at all. No, it's really excellent. I mean, it's perfect little bite. The skin is really nice. The asparagus is simply darling. It's like a little, <laughs> such a tiny little guy. Yeah. Sort of picture perfect. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that mushroom is like sweet. Mm -hmm. Like almost tart. Whoa, and the texture of it is like as crazy as it looked. There's almost a sour taste to it. Right? The mushroom. Yeah. Wow. That mushroom is crazy. Wow. Mmm. It's oh. tart. Like a cartoon, like with really long eyelashes thing. <laughs> like it's very sweet, tart, it's a little sassy. This is so good. So good. <laughs> and it, sauce. it feels hearty as well. If mm. I eat the menu, I will eat everything mm -hmm. on the plate. Yeah, that's the one beauty of the Michelins is that I eat everything. I actually eat <laughs> all of everything because it's good. <laughs> and there's not 120 things. Because we're supposed to eat more classy here. Wow. Just like. <laughs> you know, sometimes when something's really, really good, I find myself starting to speed up as I'm eating it. Yeah, like I'm same. Like, more, no, more. It's the popcorn effect. Yes. When you first have popcorn, you start with like a piece. <laughs> then now you're eating two to three at a time. Yeah. And then suddenly, <laughs> the you're just shoving it into your mouth, like trying to squash yes. something through with like a hole that it can't possibly get through. And it's a huge deal when I like the greens in the plate. And I it's love true, every single bite. vegetables. <laughs> Wabi yeah, yeah. hates vegetables. Right, and I ate that with no face, like nothing. Yeah, they were perfect. They were really good. We, oui. we. Oui. <gasps> Ooh. This is our uh, black bass that's been uh, stuffed with scallop mousse. Mm. A little more scallops. And it's swimming in a mussel broth. Wow. With fennel, a mussel, and saffron broth. And it, on top is a rosé foam. So we take the fish bones, we age them, we slowly grill them. We create a fish broth with a lot of rosé. Okay. Kind of like the saffron, kind of like a Provence style dish all together. Wow. Please enjoy. Wow, thank you. Thank you. When you hear those listed out, you're like, <laughs> every single element of that sounds complicated. And yeah. how do you even come up with it? Yeah. <laughs> and the foam on top? Uh-huh. What? Well, let's, let's get in there. We use I, a fork I think or I something. use. I think you can use either because they gave us both. Oh my god, it's so soft. Wow. Also, it's hot. Cheers. Mm. It melts in your mouth. Wow. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. I actually, you know, I you said there was like a potato oil, and mm. I taste it. A lot like curry. The texture is velvety. It's so soft. And, the, and velvety is written in like a smooth bubble cursive font. Velvety. <laughs> that. It's really so delicious and like every bite, the flavor kind of intensifies mm. throughout the dish. I'm just drinking that soup. The soup is delicious. I would love bread to dip into mm. this. Mm -hmm. so I can just like eat all the soup. It's all of the marks. You know the the rays of sun that are drawn on like a Sunday morning church bulletin. <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. I'm we loved it. We loved it. We, we loved, loved it. it. We loved it. We loved it. Loved it. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> like loved it. <laughs> if I if I were to eat here, I'd have a really hard time not trying to like catch eyes of a chef and going. <laughs> you know, really dadding out and be like. <laughs> this is our herb crusted lamb from wow. Alicia, wow. Pennsylvania. It has a pistachio ayar with a sumac Greek yogurt, a stuffed artichoke with a ricotta, and a black garlic crumb. And Shazad is pouring you a jus from the lamb. How do you eat this? Wow, what do you mean how like, do you eat Like, it? which one do you eat first? I think you, it's your choice, but we should start with the lamb. lamb. The lamb. Cheers. 
Mm. Real red meat paste, mm. like deep, and the herbs around it. Oh yeah, that is so spring, so Easter, so like mm. whoa. What's this? Uh, egg rolls go along with your lamb. It's uh, stuffed with lamb with a cilantro sauce, a little bit of a Fresno's and pickled shallots. Lamb is like this spring dish. <laughs> it is, for whatever reason, a very religious animal, isn't it? It's always around the religions. I know, I know. But it has this like, ah, just a great flavor. And the herbs on it are so nice. It's almost like how a prime rib will have that same yeah. herb crust. The herb on the lamb. The herbs are really doing it for me. It's really great. You would think, because it's just around the outside, you wouldn't taste that much, but the whole thing is that herb taste, well, and, and there's just meat on the side, kind the of. The herb seems so fresh still. Like, they're still so green, yeah. so, so vibrant. It's on the heavier side, because now we're having red meat, and we have all these other flavors with it. This fried little uh, what stuffed is this? artichoke. Artichoke, okay. Mm. There's so much information that's given to you. <laughs> at the top of each dish. Wait, this is so good. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a potato. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like artichoke. Wow. Maybe you've only had bad vegetable preparation, YB. Maybe. Maybe that's why you hate them. Maybe I gotta go to Michelin restaurants <laughs> and eat vegetables. I think you do. <laughs> this is the most beautiful little egg roll. This looks like an egg roll that's a birthday cake. It is. There's flowers on it. I mean, it's got these little red spirals. Oh yeah. It is so ornate. It's like a boat. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. This almost feels like Vietnamese, like a little bit of a vinegar tang as well. And when you bite in, all the juices <sighs> come out. Oh, yeah. It's juicy. It's really, and it's hot. It's hot. It is hot, <laughs> ripping hot. Thank God for the lettuce, because it would be burning my hands yes. if I wasn't holding the lettuce. Mmm. Mmm. Feels like a dumpling inside, the mm -hmm. way the meat yeah. is packed in there. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Mmm. Oh my god. A crazy attention to detail, and also an attention to creating details to have attention to. <laughs> right? It's so many details. And you will taste every little flavor mm -hmm. that's on there. I know. Even tiny little things, you will taste it. So impressive. Really impressive. <sighs> well, YB, thanks for joining me for these Thank courses. You. I'm sad it's over. I know. But, you know, all, all good things <laughs> must come to an end. <laughs> I guess. And it's time for me to move on to dessert. And joining me for the sweet treats is a sweet treat himself, Mr. Dropout TV. <laughs> Sam is joining me. Keith, please, Mr. Dropout is my father's name. Oh, well, <laughs> Dropout Junior? <laughs> yeah. You can call me the young Dropout. Wow. <gasps> it's a baby dinosaur. I know, it does seem like that could be it. So inside the egg, we have a custard of croissant, dark chocolate, and Chef Josiah's Maker's Mark bourbon. Uh, the ice cream is a stracciatella inspired ice cream, a little bit of a black truffle on top. And underneath, you have a candied pecan crumble. For this one, Chef recommends alternating between hot and cold. Look at this little, this egg is hot. It's oh, it's a well hot egg. It's taken care of. Eggs are meant to be hot. That's how they hatch. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. It kind of feels oh. a little bit like I'm, like I'm digging into wow. hot chocolate. Yeah. It's molten. I it mean, is, it's very wow. spongy. Just the texture my spoon is experiencing right now is <laughs> <It's> incredible. <laughs> Oh, wow. That is a custard that mm -hmm. is disguised as a chocolate cake. Yes. It sort of has the taste of a very decadent yeah. brownie. It's yeah. dark, darker chocolate than that. Though. Yeah, it's almost like a German chocolate cake, but yeah. it's a custard. Like the the love child of custard and creme brulee. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. I love that texture, almost yeah. like a granola -y on the bottom. Yeah, like not crunchy, but crispy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. like a crisped rice, but they're actually mm -hmm. nuts. It's like, mmm. I mean, that's Are they nuts. nuts? <laughs> <laughs> that's mm. when we flash the graphic up on screen. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. <laughs> the back and forth is really fun. It's like my mouth's having a hot, cold plunge. Mm -hmm. You know, feels like this is good for my circulation. This is a Korean spa of desserts. Mm -hmm. There is a way in which this is like a very sweet, much better tasting scrambled egg. 
Yeah. And this is a sweet, much better tasting cereal and milk. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ice cream is just really, really cold breakfast. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know? There's very few things as a nearly 40-year-old man that I've never done before. But one of them is to get dressed up to eat four desserts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. And I'm giddy. Yeah. Right? Oh, wow. Oh, my. Whoa. Wow. I don't even know where to begin. Here. Oh, my God. Wow. You're still going. This is like a menagerie. What? So to start, we have a Rebel Sean cheese tart. It's a French raw cow's milk cheese. The jelly is a Oro Blanco jelly, so it's a cross between a pomelo and a grapefruit. And in the center, we have a salted caramel chocolate dusted with espalette pepper. The sorbet in front of you is a blood orange sorbet on a bed of ricotta. And the fruit is a cherimoya from Rincon del Mar. It's a spritz with an aged calvado, so it's an apple brandy. Uh, for this one, we recommend starting with the warm cheese tart and then finishing with the fresh fruit. Now, if you eat them in the wrong order, you do go into a cardiac arrest. I think yeah. it's sort of like a puzzle, like an escape room. Yeah. I just oh, wanted yeah. them to see what we were seeing, because yeah. I don't never seen a fruit like that. It almost looks like a tomato that a vampire got to <laughs> and sucked all the red out. <laughs> The actual fruit. Wow. Oh, wow. What is it? It's like a tropical fruit. Um, flavor notes are similar to a sour soft and custard apple, I would say. All, all fruit looks crazy. I know that we're familiar with our fruit, but if you pretended you had never seen mm. an apple before, mm. you would be like, what the hell is that? You know that fruit is related to dinosaurs. That makes sense. I, I just made that up. I know. But I assume because we're everything's all- Everything's related. Yeah, everything's related. Well, except I guess plant and- I think if you go back far enough, maybe. Sure. This is a raw cow's milk. Should we make him kiss? Kiss. Oh man. You know what that is? That's a lovely little quiche. I guess I thought it was going to be like sweet, like a cheesecake, but it really was like salty and exciting, like food. <laughs> yeah, Not, uh, it was dessert, I guess. Yeah, it was. It was unexpectedly savory. But I would accept that on a cheese plate. That was not what I was expecting. <laughs> salty, buttery, yes. yes, bright. The pastry was incredible. Yeah, but uh, uh, almost uh, fragile. Yeah. Oh, delicate. Very delicate. We use delicate. I'm. Uh, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. No. <laughs> Sorry. We try to get vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, wow. Should I just eat? Is this the spoon? Because the way it seems like I just eat it right off this. Yeah. This the, is absolutely the, fish. the, the this, idea. This spoon technology. I love this. It, this doesn't exist. This is right? light years ahead of this where we are way as a better. society today. These came from the future. Wow. Let's try it. Mmm. We've done it again. I did oh not expect that God. texture. What the? Oh. That it, is the world's most mature gummy worm. Yeah. It's like the gummy worm people got together and went, we're in our 40s now. <laughs> Can you we know? mix this up a little Let's bit? Let's do something. Can we make it taste like a grapefruit like, kind of? Maybe like, what if it was more bitter than anything? <laughs> yeah, yes, grapefruit. Oh my God, beautiful. And the texture of it was like, it sort of shattered yes. softly. Once again, quite vulnerable. Yes, yeah. I mean, there was a vulnerable little tree. It broke apart, but yeah. it was still gummy-y. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really unique. Yeah. I don't know how to, I, I feel like I, would, I could paint it for you what it felt like, mm -hmm. but I don't think I could say and describe mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I would need maybe a haiku. Yeah, that could help. The way it broke mouth. I don't know, how am I gonna end Great that with one fruit syllable? in my mouth. mouth. Vulnerable, wasn't it? Wow, can't wait for more. Wow. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much. Let's have the stick. This is a little chocolate with a pepper. This, I would be surprised if it, like I can predict what I think this is gonna taste I, like. Yeah, I bet I've been but I bet I'm wrong. I bet I'm Let's wrong. Let's try it. I was wrong. There's caramel in there. Oh my God. Didn't expect that. I thought it was gonna have like a pretzel or something. Oh, and there's a kick too. 
It's got a little, like this little bit of pepper, chili flavor, but it's yeah. not spicy. Yeah. But it is like the flavor. I was expecting like candy cigarette. Yeah. And mm. I feel like what I got was so decadent. Yeah, and the shell is very vulnerable. Eighth therapy session, uh -huh. vulnerable. I'm Great flavor from such a narrow mm. little stick of chocolate. Let's get into the <clears> spork <throat> now. It's spork time. This was a little, this is on ricotta. On ricotta? I forget what it, it was. Blood orange sorbet. And then there's this stuff on the bottom. Yeah, there's there is. The there's bottom. a whole other liquid on the there's bottom. There's a whole other hidden liquid. There was a subterranean layer. Mm, very nice. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's very f sort of floral. Yeah. Mm. It's cheesecake y. Yes. In flavor. Yes. What's on the bottom is almost a jam. Uh huh. This creamy, cheesy flavor in the middle, this tart, acidic jam on the bottom, this icy, like crisp blood orange on top. This is nice. Oh. So I we're about to hit the last one, but I would hate to <clears throat> have you on and not ask you at all about Game Changer and Dropout and all of the successes you've had and also like how fun that show is. That's so nice of you to say, but for, I think it's just all been leading up to this. Well. You know, we're um, making new shows all the time yeah. now. And this past weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I spent the whole time shooting our first ever cooking competition show. Really? Really. Well, welcome to the industry. Thank you very much. Yes, we do those. It's called Gastronauts, and it will be out at some point before the end of the year. I did love it. It felt almost like cheating. And in a way that this does. Oh yeah, this feels like cheating, right? Yeah. I don't deserve to be here. Yeah. But, you know. Our job. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Let's try this recently vamp. How do we eat this? Oh, to the great hands? question. I was about to do hands? that and then you didn't. No, I, I was like, I, I, I didn't hands? think a spork was right. It's hands. not a mashed potato or a pudding. Let's just. Oh, that feels <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yes. This is right. This what a funny feels, ending. <laughs> this feels like it could be an organ meat. Yes, it does. Let's try it. Let's do it. Oh my God. Uh huh. Kind of tastes like pear. Okay. Kind of. Kind of. But far more vulnerable. This is the most vulnerable <laughs> one we've had. This one is got no structural integrity. I don't it, even know how it looked like it did the way it eats like pudding. Yes, texturally, I was going to say this has far more in common with like a very tender organ meat, like brain. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it absolutely uh -huh. does. It does. Or like sweet bread. Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. But the flavor profile is like pineapple meets pear. Pineapple meets pear meets flowers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I just don't even understand how it can be that soft and have um, rigidity when it was sitting there. It's very exciting to taste just fruit this good. Like, I wonder. Uh huh. And fun to hold something so bizarre at the end of a really delicate meal that honestly has confused me texturally and flavor wise the entire time. I've constantly been surprised. I might steal this. <laughs> it does look like a, an apple, the stem. It feels like the bru the most bruised banana you've ever. Like it's, you, you could. It was like, rolling around the truck, an empty truck, for for, <laughs> yes. for two hundred miles. And but also, like, we can still sell this. Incredibly dense. Yeah, that's a heavy boy. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this. Oh my God, what a treat! Yeah, make sure if you you know if you're looking for hilarious improv and game show and Dungeons and Dragons content and yes. a whole world of other stuff, check out Dropout TV. It's a blast. Great entertainment over there. If you like this, you will like this. Yeah, it's. One and one. Well, thanks. And now it's time to talk about the best and the least best. I don't think there's any least best, but if there is, it truly is the meaning of the words least best because everything was so delicious and so new to me. I, I felt like every single dish I had today had a different texture or temperature or flavor or flavor world than I expected just looking at it. And also looking at them, they were so stunning, like art edible art. 
Well, I'm actually gonna start with the best. That'll be easier for me to start in. The chicken dish was perfection. The puree of the asparagus had such great depth of flavor. Just everything on that is exactly what I want from a roast chicken dinner. In the little snacks at the top of the day, those little bites, I loved that the Wagyu bite wasn't salty and fatty, but actually had this clean, sweet depth of flavor and was like inviting me to eat more, which is exactly the purpose of that little round. And it also just challenged what I expected, which sort of was the precursor for the whole day. Everything I looked at didn't taste quite how I thought it would, but tasted better and yielded fun surprises. In the amuse portion, that little soup was so rich, lovely, comforting, familiar, yet still with elements that surprised me. The, the hot and cold contrast, which would be a theme through a handful of dishes today, but I loved it. It was really, really fun, and I don't even think about temperature as an element of flavor, typically, but it is. Oh. The fish that had the muscle broth, that was the most like eating art. I was tasting, I think, like the idea of the dish. Does that make sense? I don't know. I felt like I, I could taste the, the care and the thought that went into it really well. The herb crested lamb, it was just perfect. It really made me think of spring. I really loved it, all of it. There were just some things that I went gaga for. The desserts, oh, well, that little tart. It was really almost like a last savory moment, which I'm always saying, it, when dessert comes, I'd rather have a little more dinner. And that happened today. It was the perfect Keith treat to start it. And then all the other desserts were uh, amazing. I loved the back and forth with the egg and the ice cream, the little custard, chocolate custard that was so good. The little stick was great. The jelly was confounding. There were things I liked less than other things, but if I had only had that, I would have a pretty great impression of the restaurant. So maybe I got nothing. It was all, it was all great. Maybe I should just eliminate the least best category. <laughs> I don't think there was one. It was like, maybe how about we make some of those with the best best and then just the best. That still makes it seem like I didn't love it. I loved it all. It was really great. I had a wonderful time. This is a really exceptional experience. If you are in LA and you can get a spot, I definitely encourage you to come. And if you can't, head on over to the sister restaurant because they have a lot of things on this menu there, as well as a whole lot of other a la carte options, which I'm sure are just as every bit as delicious as this because they share the same kitchen, same staff, same brains. Well, thanks so much to my guests for joining me. Thanks to all the chefs and all their preparation. Thanks to YB, thanks to Sam. Thanks to our staff and everyone who helped us out. And of course, thanks to me. We have one more Michelin restaurant left. We gotta get those three stars. And for that, we're going to San Francisco. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Do you think there's ever um, anything that's like a Chuck E. Cheese that has a Michelin star where they have a big mascot? There ought to be because Michelin has a big mascot. So they can't be poo-pooing the mascot industry.